Okay, uh, this is Mark Phillips, part of the Helium team, and today we're going to take a look at a very exciting piece of software that we've written to help people work with the blockchain called the Helium Wallet CLI. Uh, and specifically what I want to demo is a very new uh, feature based on a new transaction called Payments V2, and it lets you do, uh, the, or rather gives you the ability to send HNT from one wallet to more than one wallet in a single transaction, in fact up to 50 wallets. Um, so we're going to demo that today, but in the process, I'm going to take you through a few of the sort of higher level features of the CLI and uh, walk you through some documentation and bring you up to speed on some cool stuff. Um, so let's uh, let's get right into it. So we're using something called the Helium Wallet CLI. Uh, it's here on GitHub. Uh, we call it Helium Wallet RS. Um, it's written in Rust, something very fancy that a lot of uh, people are using, and as I understand it, is quite good for this sort of job. Um, the source code is obviously all here. Uh, you can install from a binary for a handful of uh, different packages, and that's what I'll be using today. And you can also build it from source. And all the docs here uh, and all the docs on our developer documentation uh, assume that you're, you're working from source. So that's a GitHub repo for this. Uh, we have over here on the developer documentation, which is just developer.helium.com, the blockchain wallet CLI. Uh, and so latest version is v1.1.4. We're going to be working with that. And again, if you want to install... Uh, you can do that and we walk you through it here and we've also got all the commands um, the one that we're going to be kind of focusing on today is the uh, let me scroll down here um, sending tokens but specifically we're going to be uh, sending tokens to more than one agent address in a single transaction super exciting so uh, let's take a look at the cli so i've already got it installed here on my on my machine uh, but like i said you can build it from whatever package uh, is easiest for you or from from source so uh, to get to the, the wallet itself, once it's installed, we just give it Helium Wallet and we get a whole set of commands. So um, what I want to do is actually demo the uh, payment V2 transaction or sending uh, to that uh, set of multiple wallets in parallel early and then come back to a few pieces of the wallet and then go back and look at the transaction uh, in a few different pieces of the platform. So um, first things first, to send any HNT, we need a wallet. I've already got one created. If you wanted to create a new one, you do Helium Wallet cre uh, Create, and then you can actually go dash H or help at any point and get the whole help command. Um, I'm gonna use a basic wallet. Uh, basic wallet is just a, uh, a set of keys, one public, one private. And um, with a sharded wallet, you have a, uh, a set of keys, one public, one private, but we actually break the private key into shards, they're called. Uh, and require you to have some number of shards from that total um, specified by you as a user to actually sign transactions. So, you know, basic wallets are, are very, very secure. Um, sharded wallets are, are uh, orders of magnitude more secure. So um, definitely think long and hard about what sort of wallet you want to have. And, you know, generally when you're using the CLI as opposed to um, a Helium app for your keys, for example, um, you want to make sure you know the implications of sort of using that. So uh, on that topic, let me just sort of highlight what the wallet, the keys, and the accounts are sort of all about. So uh, most of you watching this probably have a Helium mobile wallet. You should go download one if you don't have it. We have it for iOS and Android. Um, in that instance, you are uh, giving the ability to manage the uh, private key to the wallet running on your phone. Um, super secure, of course. Helium spends uh, lots of time and engineering effort to make sure that this is very, very secure. Uh, on the other side of this, we have the Helium Wallet CLI, which is what, again, we're demoing today. Uh, the, the Wallet CLI sort of uh, requires more care uh, from the user. So you're creating a, a private key. You are encrypting that with a passphrase that you define, uh, and you're, you're basically committing to backing up your private key and passphrase uh, in a way that sort of um, suits the level of seriousness of your of your blockchain usage, right? You know, if you've got one HNT in a wallet, if you if you lose the private key to that, probably not the end of the world. But if you're storing thousands or tens of thousands of HNT in one wallet, uh, you do not want to lose your passphrase or your private key. So, uh, user beware. The CLI wallet is a is a more serious sort of way to engage with the blockchain. So briefly, uh, the mobile wallet and the CLI create and use keys based on something called the ED25519 public key signature system. We won't cover that here, but you should go read uh, about that. It's linked here in the docs. Uh, we also support NIST P256 keys. So um, that is something that you could choose to, uh, to, to use if you wanted to, and the blockchain, of course, supports both of these. So 
Uh, I encourage people to read up on this a bit. This is part of the blockchain primitives section on the documentation. So uh, let's go back to our terminal here and take a look at the CLI. So uh, I've already got a wallet created. So if I run Helium wallet uh, info, I can see that I've got a wallet here with an address. This is my public key and it's not sharded. Now uh, I'm going to send HNT to I think seven different wallets. And actually these are people who provided me their wallet addresses on Twitter and Reddit. So thank you to you uh, seven sort of uh, brave souls who want to be part of this demo. So uh, I'm going to send everybody 10 HNT and I need to have 70 uh, HNT in my wallet for that to happen. And it looks like I've got exactly that. Who would have thought? So um, if you run Helium Wallet Balance, you'll see your total balance. Here we have 70 HMT, and we uh, give you eight decimal places of precision, um, which I think is 100,000. Um, I might be wrong on that. Um, yeah, it's much more than that. Uh, but we, get, we give you eight decimal places of precision to see uh, how many sort of fractions of an HMT you have in your account. Um, one, uh, all the way, I guess, one, uh, what, 10, 100,000, 10,000, 100,000. A million, one hundred millionth of an HNT is a bone. That's a nice bit of trivia for you HNT fans out there. Um, if you have any data credits, they're going to be shown here, and if you have any security tokens, they're going to be shown here. A data credit is uh, very soon uh, going to be required to uh, sort of fund transactions. So, sending a piece of data from a sensor, receiving data um, at the sensor level, uh, sending wallet uh, to wallet HNT. Uh, these will be the transaction fees paid in data credits, and if you have those tied to your uh, public key, they will appear here. Uh, and then security tokens, if you own any security tokens, uh, they will appear here. So um, what we're going to do here is take a look at the, um, the pay command. So um, if we do helium wallet pay dash H, we get everything about how to pay people. So a few things about the flags here. Again, these are all um, these are all documented. Let's drag this real quick over here. Uh, if you go to the documentation for the blockchain API, or rather the CLI, uh, we have all of this stuff documented in a very easy to use way. And you can see that we're going to look at the sending token. So um, this is all documented here, but I'll walk you through it in the help command. So uh, we require you to include this dash dash commit flag uh, just to basically say, yes, I really do want to, um, to send this HNT. Um, you can ask it for just the hash of the transaction. And then um, additionally, if you want to point this to a different wallet file. So uh, my wallet that I'm, I'm working with on this machine uh, is tied to a wallet file just called wallet.key. Uh, that exists on this machine. If you want to, you know, if you have it stored in, in the sort of non-obvious place, uh, or you want to have like a, a different wallet file for different wallets, you can point it there using the dash F. And then the most important thing is the dash dash payee, uh, where you're uh, specifying which set of addresses or one address to send it to. And in the address format, as we'll see, is just address equals amount. So um, let us uh, send some HNT to, uh, let's see, these seven recipients. So I cheated a little bit here and I've kind of already crafted my commands. I'm just gonna take it and we're gonna clear this. So here's what we have here. So we've got the Helium wallet pay, we've got our dash dash commit flag, our, our payee flag, and then we've got seven wallet addresses here. Uh, for each wallet address, we have their public key and this equals and then 10. So we're gonna send them 10 HNT. So uh, it's gonna ask for my password after I, I uh, initiate the transaction. And this is the password for my wallet. Okay, now, boom. So it is a blockchain, of course, so things are not instantly confirmed, but um, the Helium blockchain is working with target 60 second blocks, and we've been pretty good about that of late, keeping the 60 second block. So here we have the list of addresses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, these are all the seven people who submitted addresses to me over Twitter or Reddit. Um, and then we're gonna send them 10 HMT. Now, uh, for every transaction on the blockchain, uh, we do have a hash that can be used to sort of reference it. So um, I am going to use that hash really quick and see if we can get some insight into what's actually happening on the blockchain. So uh, briefly, uh, over here we've got this uh, endpoint. So the Helium production API is now api.helium.io. 
Uh, and so um, the, we're working with V1 uh, off of that endpoint, and we're looking at the sort of route for accounts here. And again, these are all documented on the developer.canadian.com uh, devdoc site. So um, I've got my uh, address up here for the address I used to send that HMT, you know, the one that's tied to the wallet in my, uh, in my, on my machine. So you can see uh, it pretty much just has the same information that the, uh, the info command, um, or the balance command showed us rather. So um, this, is, this is a long number, but this is just 70 HMT, uh, and then this is the address. So um, I can take this transaction hash here and I can pump it into our transaction endpoint, and I can see that it's not found because this is only for confirmed transactions. Now, we do also have a route for pending transactions, which I've also got loaded up here. So if I give it a pending, this hash for a pending transaction, we get a pending transaction. So we get the uh, last updated time, we get the status, which of course is pending. Um, we get the hash, which is just the same hash we just gave it. And then we gave it the uh, created timestamp, or we have the created timestamp rather. So what will happen once this confirms is that this pending will go away and we'll, we'll see an official transaction. So um, while that's happening, I'm gonna let that clear. Let's go back to our terminal and check out a few more things. So um, we'll go back to our Helium wallet here. And so uh, just to run through these things kind of top to bottom. So if I wanna check my balance, uh, we have ability to do that. Again, we did just send 70, but the transaction isn't confirmed yet. It's impending. So we still have 70. Uh, or the blockchain thinks that we still have 70. Uh, if I want to create a wallet, we can create a, uh, a wallet using the create command. Um, we talked about help. Hotspots is another one here. So if you have any hotspots tied to the wallet uh, that you're using here locally, which some people do, some people don't, you'll get a number of hotspots here. Uh, here we have no hotspots tied to this wallet, so there's nothing found. Um, Helium Wallet Info, we'll run through that again just because we can. Uh, so Info will show you again whether or not it's sharded and then the actual just address. Um, so we'll just get our help command back up printed here so we can know what we're looking at. And now let's go take a look at uh, the transaction and see exactly what happened on the blockchain. So you know, we'll do Helium wallet info to get our name. So we get the address there. If we do Helium uh, wallet balance, we are now at zero. So that transaction is cleared. All 70 of those HMT have been distributed to those seven addresses in that one address, or one transaction rather. And then let's see here. So we pull this back over and it looks like things have reloaded in the background. Uh, so pending transaction is now not found, uh, which is good because the transaction is no longer pending. And remember, this is the hash that we had from that first and only transaction we did. And then if we go back to the actual transaction API, which shows completed things, we have the whole thing here laid out. So payment V2, that's a transaction on the blockchain. This is the time when it actually happened. That's a nice um, Unix epoch there. This huge long string, which is the signature here. Uh, of that transaction. Um, and then we have the amount uh, per payee, right? So we've got all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven addresses, I believe that's at 10 HNT per. And then we've got our address, 13 BFN, blah, 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 um, with the, uh, the nonce. So uh, when your wallet uh, um, submits transactions, it gets a nonce that's just incremented. And uh, we also show the height here of the blockchain where the transaction was accepted and then the hash, which is what we're working with. So uh, that is pretty cool. So, you know, think about what you could do with uh, a UI right on top of the ability to do multi-payments as we call them. You know, there could be, you know, one of, a lot of things that we're seeing patrons do is, um, you know, uh, they're producing tokens and splitting tokens with people who are, um, out there uh, hosting their hotspots. And so the idea of a payment transaction where you can send uh, tokens to more than one address in a single transaction, you know, behind a, a nice smart UI could be super powerful. So anyways, uh, my name is Mark. This has been a demo of the Helium uh, wallet CLI. I encourage everybody to go to the docs and read about it. Uh, and then, you know, spin up a wallet. It feels pretty cool to, to just run a command and get yourself a, a you know, a new wallet file uh, with a passphrase that you've come up with. And again, if you're using this, understand that it is a higher level of sort of requirements when it comes to the user. You're responsible for your private key. You're responsible for your passphrase. Uh, if you lose these, and we cannot help you recover them. So keep that in mind. 
Uh, other than that, uh, get out there and enjoy the Helium Network and let us know if there's anything else we can we can build or accommodate. Thank you.